Hi, Kirsten. Hey, Lindy. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good. I would like you to, first of all, introduce yourself for people who don't know you and the languages you speak. In a nutshell, uh, my name is Kirsten Cable. I have a website, or run a website called fluentlanguage.co.uk where I share tips for people who want to learn a language. So it tends to be me talking about how to build a sustainable, joyful language learning habit. I do not believe that you are ever too old to learn a language. Mm. I do not believe that you're ever too budget bound because we live in a world where it's possible to learn a language. I definitely do not believe that anybody is too stupid <laughs> to learn a language, despite what they tell me all the time. Um, so I'm just sort of a language learning crusader. And I very frequently talk because I host a podcast called The Fluent Show. Oh, oh you want to know my languages. My native language is German. I speak English every single day. I, I consider myself pretty bilingual with English. I'm married to an Englishman, I live in England, I speak French, I've got university level French from years ago, um, which I have sort of kept fresh as, as well as I could, I have studied Italian and Spanish, I'm kind of doing them in order, and um, I can read Cyrillic, I sort of did Russian for a little bit, cool. I'm playing, you'll love this Lindy, I'm playing around with Chinese at the Yay! moment, but I'm bad, <laughs> but you know, I think everybody's bad at the start. Um, and my, my language crush, the language I feel passionate about that I've been learning consistently for three years is the Welsh language, which right. is a another language of Britain. And it's just awesome. I, I love Welsh. That is so good. It blows my mind. It's like, with all respect, it's like a cat walking across a keyboard. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> it's just consonants. <laughs> no, the... You have to you have to realize that the thing that looks like a W or the, the yeah. W is yeah. a vowel. A what? And then that yeah yeah that opens it up and then suddenly it looks completely different to what you when you realize sound that. Like? It's an OO. Really? Yeah yeah and the letter Y I think is also counted as a vowel in Welsh. Fascinating. You learn something new every day. Uh, just on the note about your French, I heard you said you've been keeping it fresh since university. How do you? keep that fresh because I also learned French at school for 10 years but my level is not nearly close to someone who would speak it you know who's been learning for 10 years how do you maintain that I've had to accept the fact that my French isn't going to be I'm not using it as much as I as I did when I studied French and I actually had to do it for university so it's not going to be as good you know you have to redefine your good enough almost right. um, and what I what I do practically is just um in French, I don't do a lot of active work. I try to speak French <laughs> like three times a year. <laughs> but, you know, like I, this year we went on holiday in France and okay. I really I felt like that week there, mm. so much of it came back. That was fantastic. Right. So I try to throw myself properly at it about two or three times a year. I will switch to Netflix every now and then. I will listen to a podcast, etc. And right. it's just sort of a, oh yeah, I still understand all that. Brilliant. Move on. But it's not, it's not a focus and I have no goals in French except for, I don't want to forget all of it. Right. And you'd be surprised how much, how much does stay yeah. with you. I remember I spoke to you a few weeks back and you were sort of touching on how you started learning languages outside of the internet. Um, mm. Could you speak a bit more about that and also sort of link it to finding resources, especially for languages that are less mainstream, less common? Well, when I started learning languages, I didn't suffer from the lack of the internet because I didn't realize that the internet was a thing that was going to happen. Uh, which makes me sound about a hundred years old. But <laughs> Not the at internet all. is the internet's actually very new. It is. So, um, in in school, I. Um, I had very limited access to resources, and when I was a teenager, my, my better language was, was English, but I also had access to French, and it's mm -hmm. funny, because of where I grew up, quite near the French and Luxembourgish border, access to the French language is actually what, what people consider rare and desirable now, because now we get most of our, our language through screens, whereas the easiest way thing for me to have done at a sort of age 16, 17, is like get on a train, go to France. 
takes mm. two hours. Isn't that expensive? And there's loads of French around me. Whoa. We also had French exchange students in our school. So my school played a huge part in my language education. I was always quite tuned in to things that are not English or German. Yes. When music came in. And uh, you'd, you'd just be so much more aware of the opportunities when something did come in. Mm -hmm. And it did make you look for things. So resources without the internet for me in the 90s were record shops and magazine shops. Okay. When friends went to England, I would give them lists of magazines that I wanted them to bring back. Because impossible to get media in the English language. Honestly, I never felt a lack. That's good. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, in, in a way, most certainly. But also, you, you, do, you do milk things more than, than maybe you do now, um, mm. where you, it's much easier to move on to the next resource. Right, right. Especially, you get bored. Yeah, just playing with Chinese, I can now just, I can sit there and I can download five apps about j just for just for beginners who want to learn Chinese, and then I haven't even looked at the podcasts or at YouTube mm. yet. So the... The, the variety of resources that I can get without even putting a penny on the table is so enormous. And that wouldn't have been the same without right. the internet, I don't think. My next question for you is, um, having been doing the Fluent show for as long as you have, um, what is mm -hmm. something you've learned from it? Rather than necessarily teaching people, what has this experience of this podcast given you? I am forever impressed and, and overwhelmed with the strength of the community mm. and the variety of people who will come on the show and 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 give their time to it and chat to you and share something really interesting. This year I've started answering listener questions on a regular basis, which has also been, for me, something to learn about because you learn even more about what's on people's minds. Mm. And one thing I've learned is when people ask a question that is about, you know, the real specific, the nitty gritty of grammar, for example, mm. it's almost always also a question about what they feel they're getting wrong. That language is, is in our, is, and our own skills and our perceptions of our own skills are totally in our in our hearts and you can when you dig down and you you ask people more questions you often get to a point where they say well I just don't feel like I'm getting it right mm -hmm. and and then this is something that we can we can work on freeing ourselves from so the format of it being a podcast has allowed me to go more in depth um it's I've also learned an awful lot from Lindsay who is my mm -hmm. co-host who we've done over 50 episodes together and and I never stop you know, learning from Lindsay, it's just really, really cool. You learn how somebody else works yes. and how somebody else thinks. And especially, we're both really into language learning. You you learn to respect your differences. And you know that everybody does this differently. Right. I haven't found anybody who does it exactly like I do. And I don't expect anybody to do it like I do. It's just, that would be weird. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's, it has taught me... Um, that I can that I can voice my own insecurities mm. in a way, um, and and put things out there, and and that it's okay for you to be different in that way because exactly like like Lindsay's Lindsay's a dabbler much mm. more than I am. Mm -hmm. um, I I take it very seriously when I start a new language, seemingly, like like this is. Chinese, I'm still not officially learning. And I keep saying to people, like, not that I'm learning Chinese. Uh, I'm not learning dabbling. Chinese. I'm, I'm, ju I'm just learning this particular character and then I'm going to stop. Uh, <laughs> you'll Which, you'll no, fall into I'm it. Not. You're not going to no, stop. No. <laughs> no, no, it's too fun. It's too fun. But, you know, whereas, but for me, it's really important to like stick with Welsh for a long, long time. Mm. And I think Lindsay is like that too, but she is much, much better than me at like picking something up and kind of going, da, 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 done a bit of this and then just putting it down. Mm. And, and hopefully, as a listener, you can sort of go, oh, okay, these are completely diff two different ways of mm. doing things. I think time, or, or I don't know if it's a perception that we... I think it's not... No, I don't think it's a perception that you have more time. And it's perhaps, especially, you know, if you've got like a full-time job, you might have a family, you might have other responsibilities, and, and perhaps also 
as a as a woman in the world you spend a lot of time feeling guilty so then you're just kind of thinking like what can I what do I let down and mm. what do I drop etc it's like it's a little bit easier to to once you think of language learning as your hobby mm -hmm. I find it's kind of easier because then you've justified its existence mm -hmm. beyond like oh I must but actually if you're an English speaker do you must you really mm. um you can you know like once you accept the fact that like you love this and you're doing it because you're enjoying it it's easier a little bit to to allow yourself to put the time into it the, the best thing I've come up with is to to stop thinking of it like we used to in school where you have to like sit down and spend an hour on mm. it and instead just go well where can I fit in five minutes mm. and the five minutes don't have to be five minutes on an app people love to like only make it an app but you could just like work out your notebook we mm. had the, the podcast episode on notebooks this week and it was just uh, uh, amazing just the way um the, the, I spoke to Kat and to Sam and the way they engage with the notebook is so different to me and mm. but I couldn't live without handwriting so it's building into something you already do but also just if you do 10 minutes for th three days a week at the start like allow yourself to feel good about it allow yourself to feel like you have made time mm. and then just build from there rather than imagine like because when people say where do I find the time I often feel like they kind of feel like well where do I find the two evenings a week because mm. that's the structure of like a right. you know an adult course or an adult college course right. and that's not quite as easy mm -hmm. whereas there there are ways of, of doing it but we need to we need to think we need to think differently about how languages are learned and mm. how how you you do it by yourself and that that really helps and also i think we need to change the way we approach um like a long-term time like how long does it take to learn a language or am i going to be fluent in this language for three years i think that that also hinders us from progressing yes. because we're like oh my gosh well i've been studying for five years why am i so bad or time is so relative it, it really depends yeah. on the input and the effort not actual minutes one of my favorite questions I've ever been asked was this this girl sort of saying, so you've learned this and this and this and this and this. And she went, does it ever get easier? Mm. And I was like, what? That's the best question ever. Does it? And I really asked myself. And I, wrote, um, I wrote a blog article about it. I, I'll, I'll share the link with you yes, if you want. Yes, please. I'll put it in um, the description. Mm, yes and no. Like, it doesn't get easier. In my, my brain doesn't somehow, like pick up Chinese quicker just because I've learned Welsh. That doesn't right. make any sense. Absolutely. Of course, I, you know, if you've learned, like, Italian, yes, Spanish gets easier because mm. you've already kind of learned Spanish through Italian. But I think what's gotten a lot easier is to just feel feel good about how I do it, feel good mm. about how long it takes me, and to, to know my mind and my methods. Absolutely. So what's really changed is the, the confidence and the mindset that I can afford to approach this with because I've been doing it for... 25 years mm. the more languages we learn technically the easier it gets to pick up a language because we know what works for us but it doesn't mean you're going to learn the language a lot is it doesn't demystify it because it's still something completely new but you know even to just stop faffing around with the fear of can i do this can i right. do this can i do this think of all the time you're saving on not fretting about that yeah and I mean if you've done it before with one language surely you can do it with another that is true yeah well those are all the questions I have for you today in closing if there's anything you'd like to say to the viewers by all means this stage is yours <laughs> uh, you should listen to the fluent show <laughs> absolutely please do <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, what am I gonna say um yeah my my main thing for 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 you if you're if you just kind of stumbled on this and you're like watching on youtube thank you very much for mm -hmm. taking the time and thanks for watching lindy's channel which is which is so entertaining you do you do so well lindy it's so thank cool you. uh thanks for thanks for listening these, to these two women talking about languages <laughs> and perhaps if i'm if i'm going to plug anything i mean do check out my website of course and listen to my podcast and the other thing that i'm involved in is a um, an online event that happens regularly called Women in Language. Yes. Um, we are planning our next event at the moment. It's going to be a little one uh, where the organizers are speaking. Great. Uh, and uh, next year, uh, for in around International Women's Day, we come back and Women in Language takes place again. So if you're interested in smart women talking about 
languages and you like this kind of thing, then you're going to like that as well. Amazing. Thanks. I'll put all the details below. So thank you, Kristen, for your time and your insights. Thanks, Lindy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.